Fifty Shades of Surrender. Emma's heart raced as she stepped into the grand lobby of Blackwell Enterprises, clutching her portfolio against her chest. The building was a towering monument of glass and steel, an embodiment of power, much like its owner, Damon Blackwell. She had heard the stories. A man with a sharp mind, an imposing figure in the corporate world, and a reputation for being distant almost impenetrable. Emma, with her fresh degree in business management, felt like a small fish in a vast ocean, intimidated but eager to prove herself. As she made her way to the elevator, her mind wandered, lost in thoughts of the challenges that lay ahead. The elevator doors opened, and she stepped inside, only to bump into someone as she tried to make space. Looking up, she found herself face to face with none other than Damon Blackwell himself. Her breath caught in her throat. He was even more striking in person tall, with broad shoulders, a perfectly tailored suit, and eyes that seemed to pierce right through her. Sorry, she muttered, her voice barely a whisper, her cheeks flushing with embarrassment. Damon's gaze lingered on her for a moment, his eyes unreadable. Then, a faint smile curved his lips, but it wasn't the kind of smile that reached his eyes. It was more of an acknowledgment, a sign of intrigue. No harm done, he said in a deep, velvety voice that sent a shiver down her spine. As the elevator ascended, the silence between them was palpable. Emma couldn't shake the feeling that something had passed between them in that brief moment, something unsaid but deeply felt. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of late nights, demanding projects and endless meetings. Emma quickly proved herself as a capable and dedicated employee, but she couldn't shake the growing awareness of Damon's presence. He was always there, in the background, watching, observing. Though they rarely spoke, every interaction felt charged with unspoken tension. It wasn't until one Friday evening, when most of the office had emptied, that Damon finally approached her directly. She was at her desk, finishing a report, when she felt his presence behind her. Emma's heart skipped a beat, sensing him before she even turned around. You work too hard. Damon's voice was soft but firm. Emma looked up, meeting his intense gaze. I just want to make sure everything's perfect, she replied, feeling a strange need to impress him, though she wasn't sure why. Damon studied her for a moment, as if weighing something in his mind. Perfection is overrated, he said, and then, after a pause, join me for dinner. It wasn't a request, but something in the way he said it made Emma's stomach flip. She wasn't sure if she was ready for what dinner with Damon Blackwell might entail, but she couldn't deny the magnetic pull she felt toward him. They met at a quiet, upscale restaurant that evening. Damon was different here, still composed and confident but more relaxed. As the conversation flowed, it became clear that he wasn't just the cold, calculating businessman she had imagined. There was depth to him, a darkness that intrigued her. Over wine— their conversation took a turn from work to personal life. Damon was guarded, but Emma could sense that he was testing the waters, seeing how much she could handle. "'What do you desire, Emma?' he asked suddenly, his gaze never leaving hers. The question caught her off guard. No one had ever asked her that so directly. "'Desire. What did she desire?' Emma hesitated, unsure how to answer. "'I—' "'I'm not sure,' she said honestly— feeling the heat rise in her cheeks. Damon's lips curled into a small, knowing smile. I find that hard to believe, he said. Everyone desires something. And you, she asked, her voice softer now. What do you desire? His expression changed, darkening slightly as if she had touched on something deeply personal. Control, he said simply. I crave control in many aspects of my life. Emma's heart raced at the implication of his words. There was something behind that answer, something deeper than just business. She didn't press him further, but the air between them had shifted. She could feel the unspoken tension, the mutual curiosity, growing with every passing second. Several weeks later, after a series of increasingly intimate conversations, Damon invited Emma to his penthouse. She had been there before for work-related matters, but this time the invitation felt different. Personal loaded with meaning. When she arrived, Damon greeted her at the door, looking as composed as ever, 
but there was a subtle intensity in his eyes that made Emma's pulse quicken. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation as he led her to a private dining room, where a single table was set for two. The city lights twinkled through the floor-to-ceiling windows, casting a soft glow over the room. Dinner was quiet, almost formal, but after the meal, Damon leaned back in his chair, his eyes never leaving hers. "'I brought you here tonight because there's something I want to share with you,' he began. His voice was calm, measured, but there was an undercurrent of vulnerability that Emma hadn't expected. "'I'm not like most people. I need control in my relationships. It's who I am.' Emma's heart raced. She had suspected as much, but hearing him say it out loud made it real. "'What do you mean?' she asked, though she already knew the answer. Damon leaned forward slightly, his gaze intense. "'I want to explore something with you, but only if you trust me. If you're willing.' Emma felt her pulse in her throat, her palms dampening with anticipation. She didn't know exactly what he was asking, but she felt an undeniable pull toward him. "'I trust you.' she whispered, her voice barely audible. With that, Damon laid out the terms of their arrangement. It wasn't just about control. It was about trust, boundaries, and a mutual understanding of each other's desires. He explained that everything they did would be consensual, that she could stop at any time if she felt uncomfortable. The rules were clear, but beneath them, Emma sensed something more, an emotional depth she hadn't expected. That night— as Damon led her into his world, Emma discovered a side of herself she hadn't known existed. The experience was intense, both physically and emotionally, as Damon guided her through the boundaries of trust and surrender. But it wasn't just about power. It was about connection, about being truly seen and understood. In the days that followed, Emma found herself reflecting on what had transpired. She had always been in control of her life, her career, her choices— but with Damon, she had discovered the freedom that came with letting go, if only for a moment. Their relationship grew deeper with time. Damon, though dominant by nature, respected Emma's boundaries, and together they created a dynamic that was built on trust, communication, and mutual respect. It wasn't just about desire anymore. It was about understanding each other on a level that went far beyond the physical. One evening— as Emma stood in Damon's penthouse, looking out over the city, she realized how far she had come. She was no longer the uncertain young woman who had started this journey. She had found strength and vulnerability, and with Damon, she had discovered that true control came not from dominance, but from the courage to trust. And in that trust, both of them had found something they never expected, something real, something profound. Emma had always believed she knew herself well. She was ambitious, independent, and driven to succeed in her career. But ever since Damon had entered her life, those beliefs were constantly being challenged. His presence, his intensity, and his unyielding need for control had awakened something in her, something she hadn't even known existed. But with that awakening came fear, fear of losing herself in him, of being consumed by his world, and of discovering that the carefully constructed version of herself was fragile and easily dismantled. Every time she looked into Damon's eyes, she saw not just a man in control of his world, but someone who had the power to strip away all her defenses. It was a quiet evening when Emma sat beside Damon in his penthouse, the lights of the city stretching out below them like a vast ocean of stars. She felt the weight of his gaze on her, even as they sat in silence. The room was filled with an unspoken tension, a question hanging in the air, and she knew that tonight, things would change between them. "'You've been remarkable, Emma,' Damon finally said, his voice low and filled with an emotion she couldn't quite place. "'But I sense there's something you're holding back.' The words hit her like a shockwave. He saw through her, as always, peeling back the layers of her carefully composed exterior with the precision of a surgeon. Emma swallowed hard, her heart pounding in her chest. She had always prided herself on being strong— on maintaining control over her life and her emotions. But with Damon, she felt exposed in ways that were both terrifying and exhilarating. "'What do you mean?' she asked, though she already knew the answer. Damon's eyes softened, but there was a seriousness there, a quiet intensity that made it impossible to look away. "'You've given me your trust, but only up to a point. 
I feel like you're still guarding part of yourself. You let me in, but only so far. Emma's breath caught in her throat. He was right, of course. She had been holding back, afraid of what it would mean to fully open herself up to him. I... I don't know how to let go, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. I've always been in control of my life, of everything. I'm afraid that if I let go, I'll lose myself. Damon shifted closer, his presence grounding her, offering reassurance without words. His hand reached out to gently brush a strand of hair from her face, and for a moment, Emma closed her eyes, savoring the tenderness of a gesture. I don't want you to lose yourself, Emma, Damon said softly. I want you to find more of who you are with me. This isn't about control for control's sake. It's about connection, about discovering something together. His words hung in the air, heavy with meaning. Emma felt her chest tighten, a surge of emotion rising up inside her. She had never thought of it that way before. Maybe what she feared wasn't losing herself to Damon, but losing the version of herself that she had always shown to the world, the composed, controlled version. With him, there was no pretense, no hiding. I want to try, Emma said, her voice trembling with both fear and anticipation. I want to let go. The night was darker than usual, the city lights below the penthouse barely flickering in the distance. Inside, however, everything felt heightened. Emma had never been more aware of her surroundings. The texture of the couch beneath her, the warmth of Damon's hand resting lightly on her back, the steady beat of her own heart thundering in her chest. I've been thinking about what you said, Emma began, feeling her throat tighten with emotion. She had spent countless sleepless nights turning his words over in her mind. And now, sitting here with him, she knew she couldn't avoid the truth any longer. And you're right. I've been holding back. Damon didn't say anything at first, but she could feel the weight of his gaze on her, steady and patient, as if giving her the space she needed to express herself. His calmness was a stark contrast to the storm brewing inside her. I'm scared, she admitted, the words spilling out before she could stop them. I'm scared that if I let you in completely, if I let you see all of me, you won't like what you find. I've spent my whole life being perfect, keeping everything under control. I don't know if I can let go of that. Damon's silence stretched for a moment longer, and when he finally spoke, his voice was filled with a quiet intensity. Emma, I'm not looking for perfection. I never have been. I want you, the real you, with all your flaws, your fears, your imperfections. That's what makes you beautiful. His words hit her like a wave, and Emma felt her defenses start to crumble. She had spent so long building walls around herself, hiding behind a mask of control and competence. But with Damon, those walls felt fragile, ready to shatter at any moment. I want to try, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Her heart raced, but it wasn't out of fear. It was out of anticipation, out of the possibility that with Damon, she could finally let go of the mask she had worn for so long. Damon smiled then, a genuine, warm smile that reached his eyes. We'll take it slow, he said his voice soothing. There's no rush. This is about us, together. That night, something shifted between them. It wasn't just about physical intimacy anymore, although that was there, too, pulsing beneath the surface. It was about trust, about vulnerability, about opening herself up to someone in a way she had never done before. As Damon led her into his world once more, Emma felt herself surrendering, but not in the way she had feared. She wasn't losing herself. She was finding parts of herself she hadn't even known existed. It was a revelation and awakening, and as she lay in Damon's arms later that night, she realized that she had never felt more alive. But with every moment of intimacy and trust came new challenges. As Emma's connection to Damon deepened, the outside world seemed to close in on them. His business was expanding rapidly, and with that came increased media attention, not just on his professional life but on his personal one as well. Reporters began to speculate about Damon's mysterious relationship, and Emma found herself thrust into the spotlight, a place she had never wanted to be. The pressure was relentless. At work, her colleagues whispered behind her back, making sly comments about her relationship with the CEO. 
The media hounded her every step, hungry for any scrap of information they could get about the woman who had seemingly tamed the untouchable Damon Blackwell. One evening, after a particularly exhausting day of dodging reporters and dealing with whispers in the office, Emma collapsed onto Damon's couch, her body and mind drained. Damon, who had just returned from a long day of meetings, noticed the strain in her expression and sat beside her, his hand resting gently on her knee. "'I don't know how much longer I can handle this,' Emma confessed, her voice heavy with frustration and exhaustion. "'The attention, the rumors. It's suffocating me.' Damon's expression darkened slightly, his jaw tightening. "'I know it's hard,' he said, his voice low but filled with concern. "'But we can get through this. I'll do everything I can to protect you.' Emma sighed, leaning into him, her body weary. I don't want you to change your life for me, Damon. But I also don't want to lose myself in all of this. It feels like I'm losing control. Damon's grip on her hand tightened slightly, as if he were trying to anchor her in place. I'll never let that happen, Emma. I'll never let you lose yourself. You're stronger than you think. But despite his reassurances, Emma couldn't shake the growing unease that gnawed at the edges of her mind. The pressure was mounting, and she feared that no matter how much they loved each other, the world around them would tear them apart. Could their connection survive under the weight of scrutiny, or would the very thing that had brought them together, their shared intensity, their desire for control, ultimately destroy them? As the weeks went by, the external pressures only grew stronger. Damon's business ventures required more of his time pulling him away on long trips and leaving Emma alone to face the brunt of the media attention. She missed him, but more than that, she missed the peace of her life before him, the simplicity, the privacy. Now, everything felt out of control, spiraling beyond her grasp. One evening, after yet another day of dealing with reporters camped outside her apartment and whispers at the office, Emma sat down with Damon in his penthouse. She had reached a breaking point, and she knew that something had to change. I don't know if I can do this anymore, Emma said, her voice trembling with the weight of her emotions. Damon turned to her, his expression unreadable, though his eyes softened. What do you mean? he asked cautiously. Emma took a deep breath, her hands twisting in her lap. I mean all of it. The attention, the pressure, the constant scrutiny, us. Her voice cracked on the last word. I love what we have, Damon but I feel like I'm losing myself in all of this. I don't even recognize who I am anymore. Damon's eyes darkened slightly, but there was no anger there, only concern. He reached out, taking her hand in his, his touch warm and reassuring. Emma, I understand how overwhelming this must be for you. And if you need to step back, if you need space, I'll give you that. But I don't want to lose you. Not now, not ever. His words hung in the air, filled with raw emotion. Emma could see the vulnerability in his eyes, the same vulnerability he had always tried to hide behind his calm, controlled exterior. In that moment, she realized that Damon was just as scared as she was, scared of losing her, scared of the uncertain future that lay ahead. I don't want to lose you either, Emma whispered, tears stinging at the corners of her eyes. But I need to find a balance. I need to be me, not just us. Damon nodded slowly, his expression softening. Then we'll find that balance, together. Whatever it takes. In that moment, Emma knew that they had reached a turning point in their relationship. It wouldn't be easy. Nothing about their love had ever been easy, but for the first time, she felt like they were truly in this together, partners in every sense of the word. As they sat there, their hands intertwined, Emma felt a sense of peace wash over her. She had made her decision. She would fight for their love, for their connection. But she would also fight for herself. And with Damon by her side, she knew that they could face whatever challenges lay ahead together.